This week, we're in the market for something substantial. Man wants big house, looks nice. <laughs> Clearly, for some people, it's not just about location, it's size that counts. It's always big up there. It might be a bit too small. It's not very big. We're trying to eke out a few extra feet. Once you had six foot four man. But after a large portion of emotion, clearly something has gone really badly wrong. Suicidal in Surrey. Have we found the perfect fit? I feel so much better. Nice. Absolutely amazing. Week, we're racing across three of the country's costliest counties in pursuit of the perfect property. We've got two sets of perky house hunters with healthy budgets, but it's their wish lists that could leave us feeling distinctly under the weather. We're right in the heart of the pricey commuter zones of Surrey, Hampshire and Berkshire. It's here you get a taste of country life while still being in range of the capital, but your pockets better be deep if you want to buy into it. It's one of the hardest places in the country to find a home, and even in the current climate, competition is hot. I'm going to be scouring the streets of Surrey for chartered accountants David and Lucy Ramsden. They're keen to put down some permanent roots, but up until now, their life has been anything but suburban. We were living in Tokyo for a year and a half um, and thoroughly enjoyed it out there. Hard work and a serious amount of saving allowed them to build up a substantial pot of money for their future home. All the more important because while they were there, Lucy found out she was expecting their first baby. So, four months later, they returned to their jobs in the UK, sold the flat they owned in London and moved into rented accommodation in Guildford. Five months later, baby Evie was born. Life's had to change a lot since uh, we've had the little one and, uh, yeah, we have grown up a bit. We're now, we're now a proper family. So David and Lucy's need for that family home has never been greater and it's somewhere they want to stay for the next 20 years. It's a huge investment that will affect the rest of their lives, so we're going to have to be very careful how we spend their £850,000. I think we are picky because we have to be. This is our family home, our forever home, and we're spending a lot of money. It's the biggest purchase we're ever going to make in our lives. If you're going to be fussy or picky, this is kind of the time to do. Nestled in the heart of Surrey, Godalming, just outside Guildford, is the centre of their search area. But round here, in these times of austerity, there just isn't the same amount of buying and selling of houses as there used to be. So those that are on the market tend to be expensive due to their rarity. Time for a friendly reality check. Hi, Phil. Hi, Phil. Nice to meet you. Very nice Hello. to meet you. Congratulations you. on little Evie. Thank you. We're looking for quite a big house, by all accounts. Four bed detached. That's right. Period features, character right. are going to be important. Yeah, That's we, right. we want it all, I think. <laughs> I have to say, though, uh, <laughs> there's an awful lot of people that are making the same move as you are, and a lot of people living in rented waiting to strike when the right things come on. So it's tough. Yeah. 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 What's going to be more important to you, the house itself or the location? Hand on heart, probably I would go the house, but I think, Lucy, you might be a little bit different to that. Yeah, location, I think it's perhaps more important for me. I don't want to feel isolated because I'm at home a lot. What you've just explained is, is so standard. Man wants big house, looks nice, <laughs> go off to work. Woman, more practical. <laughs> It's a sign of the times. People are less inclined to buy big houses just to make a statement. It's more about long-term quality of life. So I'm with Lucy on that one. If you spend £850,000 on a house, you're in for 4% stamp duty. That's 34 grand to pay on top of the purchase price. So not something you'd want to repeat too often. And that's why this place has to be right. So, for their hard-earned cash, they want a detached house with four bedrooms on a sizeable plot. It must be a period property with plenty of character. And Lucy wants to be near a town. Important for her not to feel isolated, but David would be quite happy to go rural for a bigger house. However, he wants his total commute into the city to be less than 90 minutes. I'm just over the border in Hampshire with our other set of house hunters. Police officer Emma Wilcox and her partner, IT manager Kelly Price. Although they met four years ago, they've never owned a place together. For Kelly and Emma, spending £325,000 on a home is not only a major financial investment, but a huge emotional one as well. It's going to be our house, you know, a you know, joint mortgage. 
I'm really excited. Can't wait. Want like two things together and. Kelly has owned a property before, but Emma is a first-time buyer. And for her, this house isn't just about bricks and mortar. That's why we have to get this one right as well. For the last two months, they've been house-sitting in Aldershot for a friend who's on active duty in Afghanistan. She's back in yeah. a few months' time, so we need to make sure that we do her out by then. Yeah, because we won't have anywhere to live otherwise. Yeah, we'll be homeless. <laughs> Kelly and Emma have a close-knit group of friends who they love to entertain. So finding the right size property where they can all spend time together is really important. But it's not just socialising that's a consideration here. They too have family responsibilities. Daisy is, uh, she's about five years old now. So I got her um, for Emma. And then we've got uh, Sammy. He's very much a mummy's boy. <laughs> yes. Kelly and Emma are hoping to find their first home together somewhere amongst the towns and villages south of Reading and Bracknell. Time is not on our side for this one, so best to get cracking. So, it's your first purchase and your first home together. That's right, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okie doke. Kelly, you first, off the top of your head, what you want. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, nice living space, uh, a kitchen where we can entertain, and a nice mm -hmm. sized garden. Definitely be up there. Emma? Uh, mine would be not to be on a main road, um, right. somewhere we can go out for a walk together. What about the cats? Well, not on a main road. <laughs> not on a main road. That, no, my, no, not, no, that is, that, my, okay, that yeah. is yeah. very much the top of my list. For their £325,000, they want a three-bedroomed property. No problem if it needs updating. For Kelly, size is important. It must have enough space to entertain family and friends, whereas Emma wants a quiet location that is safe for the cats. That's enough. So, initial appraisal? Initial appraisal, having just met David and Lucy, they've got a long wish list and they want, they genuinely want a forever home, forever. They made that quite clear. And I'm nervous about being in Surrey. I always think Surrey is the hardest county to go looking for houses in. Oh, Phil, come on, it's not that bad. It is, it's, it's extremely tough. Suicidal in Surrey. <laughs> I hope it doesn't get that bad. Well, so do I, Phil. Oh, well, I'm, I'm feeling rather rosier about my situation. I've not a big budget for this neck of the woods. It is all about finding the right home that is safe and cosy for the cats. And safe and cosy for Emma. She was brought up in rural rails. Can't say rural rails. It's obviously catching that thing you have with your oh, heart. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <laughs> in choosing Surrey, David and Lucy are taking on one of the priciest counties outside the capital. However, it does have some of the best schools and the crime rate is well below national average. Round here, your average house comes in at £296,000, almost twice the national average of £162,000. Picture postcard villages like Chiddingfold and Brockham top out the market. But there are cheaper bits of the county to the north around Woking, where you can expect to pay something like 18% less. David and Lucy love Godalming, an expensive area where celebrity residents have included Chris Evans and Cheryl Cole. I'm very aware that Lucy doesn't want to feel isolated, so I'm keen to see how she reacts to our first property. We've found a gorgeous family house in the pretty but expensive rural hamlet of Hydestyle. It's three miles south of Godalming, which may be too far from civilization for Lucy. Not sure. Keen to find out. The house is really pretty, isn't it? It's really lovely. It's got a lovely feel to it already. Are you a bit fidgety about the distance from Godalman, or are you comfortable? It's definitely a consideration I need to think about, but it's <laughs> it's not a deal breaker. I, I love the fact that you're near walks. That's really important to me as well. Yeah. So, this detached cottage has a lovely reception room, stylish dining room, and the character and homely feel they're looking for. Admittedly, it's not the biggest house on the block, but it still has four cosy bedrooms, perfect for an expanding family. The whole thing sits on a good-sized plot and has a very usable separate annex. Kicking off slightly under budget, this place has a guide price of £695,000, a sizeable chunk beneath their £850. Very sort of country style. It's beautiful. It's very lovely. Yeah. They've dressed yeah. it well. That's they the have. thing, we have to picture it with our stuff in it. Yeah. That's right. I'm sure it's see, just as beautiful. <laughs> and the dining room. Uh, this is an extension. Uh, and it was originally a two-bedder. 
it's 40% bigger today than it was built. So I, I, I think the, the opportunity to extend it is null and void. The other thing to remember when considering a property that has been extended is to check that all the planning permissions are in place. If they're not, it's not the end of the world, but you may have to spend time, energy and money sorting out the problem. So far they've liked the downstairs, but upstairs is rather quaint, and quaint David ain't. Watch your head, six foot four man. <laughs> yeah. It's quite quirky up here. This is the master with its ensuite shower room. Oh, ensuite. Yeah. Any question is, will we fit our bed in here? I think you wouldn't have much, much room for anything else, would you? Um, and yes, it's got sort of four bedrooms, but I'm wondering once Evie suddenly is this tall, if we have other children, they're also that tall, would it yeah. then feel a bit, a bit closed small, in, yeah. a bit small? I sense David's desire for the big impressive house is starting to rear its head. It's a really good start and, and they're assessing it in exactly the way that I hope that they would do. I'm not really seeing buying signals. But surely an old dog like you can be surprised every now and again? I've really fallen for this house. <laughs> I love it. Um, I like the homely feel. I could see myself living here. So yeah, I feel very excited about this house. I really like it. Well, there's a turn up. It can't be this easy. Does the house warrant being further out of Goldman for you? I think so, yeah. I really like the house. It's that kind of chocolate box, homely house. Mm. Yeah, a little bit a little bit concerned that maybe the upstairs space is not quite big enough. But the position of the house, feel of the house, I'm on the right tracks. Definitely, Definitely yeah. yeah. It's a great start. I think it's a fantastic start, yeah. So the house feels right okay. in that sense. Right, we've got our we've got our benchmark. But it's starting to rain, so yeah, let's, let's take a run. run. Come on. <laughs> Lots of positive sounds. But of course they are a terribly polite couple. Maybe this will be the one, but it'll be interesting to see how they react when I start showing them houses that take us up to the top of their budget. This week, I need to find policewoman Emma and her partner Kelly an arresting property that it would be criminal not to buy. While accountants David and Lucy have got me searching the streets of Surrey for a home that suits their sums. Will this one ever add up? It's a notoriously difficult county to go house hunting, but I'm determined to find Lucy and David a forever home. It's not exactly straightforward with our other house hunters either. Kelly and Emma have got £325,000 to find that perfect first home for them and their beloved cats. Their temporary accommodation runs out in a couple of months, so the schedule's tight. They want us to focus on the area southeast of Reading, where Hampshire meets Berkshire. It's a good choice. You still get all those great transport links into London and down to the coast. But houses are about 35% cheaper than Surrey. An average house here will take you back just over £218,000, 56000 above the national average. Their favourite village is this one, Eversley. It's in the north of Hampshire, nine miles from Bracknell. When we first started searching, there were no suitable houses for sale here. So we sent out a shed load of flyers. If you've got a specific area you want to live in, bombarding it can work wonders, opening doors to properties no one else has seen. And it's worked for us, as word came back that one owner was thinking of selling. And here we are. But it's a bit of a coup, really, to, yeah. to, because the market's so tight. To get something before anybody else, we're, we're dead tough. We thought it was quite special. Yeah, yeah. it looks special. It's yeah, lovely. it does, yeah. No, it's, um... Broad is lovely for the cats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah plenty of mice around here. Yeah, exactly. Cats will be happy. Yeah, yeah definitely. Right. This semi detached cottage has two good sized reception rooms and a decent sized kitchen, perfect for entertaining. It's got the three bedrooms they were looking for and a massive garden. It was valued 18 months ago at 345,000, 20,000 above their budget. But the possibility of a private sale could shift that price. Dealing face to face with the owner can pay off. For a house like this, they could save over £8,000 in estate agent fees, which means you can try and persuade them to reduce the price. But of course, this sort of direct negotiation isn't for the faint hearted. Because they've shifted the staircase from where it would naturally have been, it opens up the middle of the house okay, yeah. for a dining area, kitchen, 
and 130 foot of garden. Oh, wow, OK. Wow. Oh, <laughs> garden. At the back, isn't it? We thought it was a very, very pretty house. Yeah. The location is spot on, it's fab. I didn't like the way we walked into the front door and came straight into the, came straight into the front yeah. room. And it's not very big. When I first met Kelly and Emma, it did seem like they had quite different criteria. And even at this early stage, that's coming home to roost. Why is it coming across that you feel more strongly about location than Kelly does? I was surrounded by fields right. back home in ways where Kel grew up in, in a town, basically. So I like the field side of it. I feel like I'm like a part of Wales kind of thing. You take that with you. Emma obviously likes this place, so it's important we try and find a way to make it work for Kelly as well. It looks to me like there's, there has been a door in the past that would lead into the kitchen. OK, yeah. I'm sure you could put a door further along. Yeah. Um, and I reckon you could do a lot more with that conservatory. Yeah, cos it's not really used, is it? No. Everyone loves a trial, Phil, and you're not the only one trying to get Kelly to like this place. Yeah, it's the bathroom. Quite, it's quite small. She hasn't got a bath. Yeah, but a nice big shower. This would be the yeah. master bedroom. Yeah. Might be a little bit too small, though. I mean, the view is fantastic. Yeah, the view is she amazing. Guys and Sammy and Daisy out there. Yeah, they would love that. Yeah. You? Are you enjoying being up there? Well, I was thinking and... this is about the height difference between Kelly and Emma, which might be why Emma doesn't think that house is okay. small and Kelly does. Yeah, possibly. Do They're a nice couple, though. They're a really nice couple, and I wouldn't want to have any kind of divide and rule no, stuff. Especially, especially not in house one. No. Come to think of it, though, we have got a bit of a divide. Well, there we have it. How did we get on? Yeah, I think beautiful yes. location. Yeah, uh, fabulous. Uh, I feel the house is a bit too small. Kitchen, <laughs> my eyes, big enough. I'm Bedroom size is not far off either, really. I've got to say, it sounds like Kelly's walking away from this house saying adieu and Emma's moving in. Possibly. Quite a lot of compromises, the way you come in the front door. Yeah. What a shame. With a bit of patience, this place could be a great home in a near-perfect location, but it seems Kelly just won't compromise on the size issue. Over the border in Surrey, we've also got a dilemma. David wants to see every penny of his budget invested in as much bricks and mortar as possible. But Lucy wants access to amenities and the potential to carve out a social life with other young mums. This is a forever home, so the stakes are high. Our second property is in Hindhead, eight miles south of their ideal spot of Godalming, which they know well, and three miles from the upmarket town of Hazelmere, which they don't know at all. But you do get more for your money round here, and we found them a beautiful detached family house. I'm just hoping it doesn't feel too far outside familiar territory for Lucy. Hidden away up the path here is this rather lovely Edwardian house, oh, yeah. built as a pair with next door, built in 1905. It's lovely from the outside. Yeah, it? it looks really nice. Mm, really I like really the nice. porch. Personally, I think this area offers everything, certainly that Godalming does, in terms of amenities and mothers' groups and shops and cafes and all, all that goes on. Okay. Yeah, that's good to hear, because we don't know. really know this area. We've not really been here before. Let's have a look around. This place is huge, with two fantastic reception rooms and the most amazing contemporary-style kitchen diner overlooking the garden. Upstairs, there are four large bedrooms and a family bathroom. The sale of this house has fallen through. It was being marketed at 795,000, but to entice new buyers, it's just recently been reduced to offers in excess of 750. Immediately, a, a much, much bigger feel in this house. Yeah. Nice space, oh, nice really size. Nice. Yeah. Like the window. Lovely right, window. Have. Come and see the, the best room. Oh, thanks. Oh, nice. You would absolutely live in here. That's amazing. Yeah, nice. That's amazing. There's a utility room and there's a playroom in here. In terms of young family living, it's one of the best kitchens I've been in for some time. This is stunning. There is now a fair bit of interest. In fact, there is an offer that they are considering at the moment. OK, so we have to think about it quite quickly. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> It's a great house and there's no doubt it has the sort of curb appeal that I suspect is high on David's list. Got an interesting layout. Yeah, it's really unusual. Lovely amount of space that's so light. Uh, David said when we first met that he was the one that was 
much more conscious of the house, you were more conscious of the area. Obviously, he's going out to work every day. Is he as aware as he needs to be of your day-to-day -day routines as a mum at home? Yeah, that's, that's the only thing that's kind of playing in my mind at the moment, is the location right. And I feel like I need to explore a bit more and find out. Mm. So um, I think he's, he'd be willing to be flexible on that. So long as he, as, as he gets an Im impressive enough house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How are you getting on, David? Yeah, it's not too bad, admiring the view, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite an exciting place. It is. It's absolutely fantastic. We don't actually need to look at any more properties. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, wow. It was uh, just a stunning place. Oh, that's, um, that's really liked a it. terrific reaction. Yeah. I'm pleased David likes it, but I can't help noticing a slight lack of consultation with Lucy about the location. This is far from a done deal. I think we still need to do a bit yeah. more exploring, don't we? But uh, it's, it's certainly looking good at the moment. Think through the area, think through the options, think through the choices you've got to make. A job well done, but I still think I can do better on the location front for Lucy. Back in Berkshire, and I've already been given a caution about the first property I showed Kelly and Emma. So I've brought them to Sandhurst, famed for its Royal Military Academy. I want to give Kelly the opportunity to see a big house, but inevitably that means a pretty major compromise for Emma. Right. We have sacrificed a bit of the peace and quiet for size. What do you feel about the area and the road? Um, quite a few cars have, are going past, aren't they? Yeah, you know, just worry for the cats more than anything else. They do get out the front, then they are pretty much on a quite a busy-ish main yeah. road. But... This is a road with speed bumps, and at the back, there's a cul-de-sac. OK. And I don't think the cats are going to be interested in going out the front. I hope they're convinced, because this detached house is more than half as big again as the last one. Round with period features, it has two reception rooms, a pretty smart kitchen, three sizeable bedrooms and a decent garden. It's only been on the market for two weeks, and it's bang on budget at 325 grand. What you've got here okay, is the on. sort of diner. Um, this is really nice. It needs work doing to it straight away, yes, but yeah. you could you could still. Well, they've move done in a here. lot. They, I mean, it, it it needs finishing. You know, you've either got to paint these floors or sand them or carpet them. They've kitted out the kitchen. The only thing they haven't finished is the utility area at the back of the kitchen. Okay. But it's really nice. Lovely. Mm. I really like it. Emma's being a bit quiet about this place. She can obviously see its strengths, but that road is a sticking point. It is an issue, but it's it's not a sort of because of the the sleeping police. Sorry, not sleeping policemen. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're uh -huh. not. What are they called? We don't road call them sleeping policemen anymore, do we? Just no. Road humps. That's, is that politically incorrect to call <laughs> a road humper sleeping? I think policeman? it's because you're standing next to me, really. <laughs> <laughs> we think of another word. <laughs> OK, road humps. Yeah, that's the one. Right, okie dokie. Oh dear, I'm not doing a good job with this whole road issue and it's frustrating because the house is perfect for them. Oh, it's a big bedroom, isn't it? It's a nice yeah. little fireplace there. Very it's good. cute. Still hear the noise, though, can't you? Yeah, still quite noisy outside. If they go for this house, it will be Emma that's doing the compromising. I suspect she may be the more flexible of the two. She minds about peace and quiet, and not just f for the cat's sake. But Kelly minds more about the size. We'll see. We will see. Oh, OK. Bathroom? Yeah. It's got, it's got a bath. <laughs> yeah, it's got your bath. It's OK In size, isn't it? Well, it's all done, isn't it? It's all yeah. finished. Right. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Always oh, big up there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is big up there. It's yeah, really yeah, big it's up fantastic. there. fantastic. Yeah. There's a couple of compromises with the road and the noise. Yeah. But the property itself is fantastic. Right, off to brilliant. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Emma's starting to see the value of all that space, but can she compromise on her top requirement? We have ourselves a right royal dilemma. OK, it is a bit of a noisy road. That was a bus just then, but it's very big. This week, we're battling it out with our picky pairs to choose the perfect property or prime location. Of 
obviously, you can't please all of the people all of the time. But is some of the people, some of the time, too much to ask? Oh, come on, Kirsty, I don't think we're doing that badly. We've both got some good contenders. We just need to solve this whole location puzzle. Tell me about it. For David and Lucy's third property, we're heading to Cranley, situated in the south of Surrey. It's a smart, bustling village that Lucy and baby Evie could take full advantage of. The house we're going to see is only 20 minutes walk away and it's brimming with potential. The downside, David's got a 25 minute drive to Guildford train station, making his total commute into the city right on the limit of his specified 90 minutes. Still, he can't have it all his own way, can he? It's by far and away the biggest house. On okay. the biggest plot with a third of an acre for a garden. It looks nice from the outside. Yeah. <laughs> this is properly a forever home. Yeah. I like the fact we're near Cranley. It's somewhere I can get the pushchair, go out, go down mm. to the cafe. But it, it would be a tougher commute. There's no hiding yeah. from that. Yeah. But it is what he originally told us was acceptable, and the house could really be worth it. As it stands, there are two big reception rooms and four double bedrooms that could all do with updating. But it's the small kitchen that needs the most attention. The good news, though, is that this place is 100k below budget at £750,000. It'll need a fair bit of imagination and a strong nerve, but it could be a cracking house. This could be made a very easy place mm. to live happily and just sort of get on with living. You know, particularly if you're having the longer commute, you want it to be worth it. That's the one thing at the moment. I'm sort of looking around the house the whole time and I'm thinking 25 minutes drive, 25 minutes drive to the station is that. Mm. Plus the yeah. work on the house, that's something I'm struggling a little yeah. bit with at the moment. He's wobbling already. I'd say the chances of David strapping on his tool belt and getting stuck in are looking pretty slim. And my plan here is to combine three rooms into one. The kitchen's okay. quite small, quite dark. Yeah. But there's a lot that could be done. OK. You take out all of these walls, you can start to imagine from here all of that as an open kitchen space. Yeah. But you've got to tuck into some work. Yeah, I can see that there's a lot of potential here. Um, it's weighing up that big renovation work, even if we stay in rented accommodation. I think I'm perhaps more keen to do work than, than David is. That's so often the case. So, so, honestly, Lucy, you wouldn't believe how many times men just aren't up for it. I don't know what you're talking about, Kirsty. I'm always up for it and a bit of renovation. For me, it's still, it's still a contender. So there's a little spark there's a, there's of There's a spark there. there, yeah, definitely. What can I do to fan the flames? To help me visualise what it could look like. Right. You can stand here, you can see your big bed with bedside tables. So you wake up in the morning and you're looking at that. That's nice, nice view. See how much space there is yeah. at the end of that room. We've got a big bed, it's very long, but yeah. there's still going to be a lot of so space. There's going to be tons of space. You can have a dressing table at the end there with a big mirror. It's not going to block any light out because it's so light. You would uh, get rid of all of that and have a much nicer cupboard. This is not a difficult house to make look fantastic. Full marks for effort, Kirsty, but I just think David has a number of issues with this place and the extra commute isn't helping things. To be honest, I think the commute is a great cop out because he doesn't want to do the work and he's scared of it. And luckily, he's going to be able to say no to this house based on the commute and not on the fact that he's chicken. Yeah, but his wife's more than capable of managing the whole I know. process. I know, I know, I know, I know. You quite like this sort of potential. Yeah, I like the idea of creating your own home. I'm a bit worried about the amount of work we'd need to do, to be honest. And yeah, I thought you'd say it's a bit too much hard work. And couple that with Evie as well. I think, is it just going to be too much of a project? We've already got one. Don't call her a project. <laughs> you see the mistake you made, Phil? You didn't lie down on the floor. That would have swayed him. Not as smiley as you were yesterday. <laughs> Not quite as smiley. <laughs> a little bit troubled, perhaps. A little bit troubled. I think it's the size of the piece of work we need to do is perhaps something that may be putting us off on top of us that, off? the commute. Us <laughs> off? Me off. Who are you? Me yeah. Oh, you're harsh. No, it's harsh, true. but it's true. True. It's true. true. It's a lot of hard work, and I think I'd be the one that have to drive it. So, when all's said and done, is it in or is it out? I think we have to say this one's out. I think it's out. Yeah. 
In my opinion, a bit of a missed opportunity there. A few months' pain would have got them the house of their dreams. Back in Hampshire, and I've got one chance left to find the perfect first home that will suit both Kelly and Emma. So we're heading four miles southwest of Bracknell to Crowthorne, a large, bustling village with a well stocked high street. I'm pinning all my hopes on this house, a 1950s semi, which pushes the size button for Kelly, but is also in a quiet location for Emma and the cats. It's the perfect combination. Not sure about the look of it. No, I'm not hundred sure of the look. Oh, we like a more of a character-looking, yeah, a Victorian style, which that isn't. Oh, I certainly wasn't expecting that kind of reaction. This is a really good house and has the spacious feel of the last one we saw. It's got brilliant entertaining space, which is important to Kelly. It's got the three bedrooms they need and an 80-foot garden. The best thing is it's 15K under budget at £310,000, so there's plenty of money to put their stamp on it. Better inside than out? I don't feel it's big enough. Definitely you don't think it's big enough? No. How does it strike you? I don't know, really. I'm a bit gobsmacked at the moment. I don't know what to see. Gobsmacked by what? I don't know. I think it's the look of the house. Yeah. You know the look of the house, you think? Yeah. You don't like the look of the house? No. Not at all? This was the house that was supposed to bring them together. It has, but not in the way I was expecting. This is a real blow, because I was really pleased with this house. It's in such a lovely, peaceful, quiet location. It's well within budget, which leaves them ample funds to do whatever you need to groovy this house up. And their slightly petulant dismissal of it was a bit galling. Is it three? Three bedroom? Yeah. Two and a half? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a silly to hope they're going to come downstairs and say, yay, this is the one for us, we've seen the light, we know you're right. This hasn't got the right feel, has it? It's not really for us. No. I don't get good feel either. No. Yeah. OK. For Kelly, it was size. For Emma, it was location. This was the only house that combined both. It's a bitter pill to swallow. Clearly, something has gone really badly wrong. What is so disappointing about this house, given that it's a good, peaceful location and that it's a good price and that you could alter it? Um, I don't know. It's, that's... In your mind, there was something better waiting out there mm -hmm. and it hasn't turned up. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Poor Emma. I obviously made a mistake with this place. We need to have a really good think about how we're going to solve this for her. Sorry to hear it's not going so well, Kirsty, but it doesn't stop me saying that over here in Surrey, things are pretty good. We've just had a tip-off from a local agent about a truly stunning house, the type of which only comes to the market every blue moon. Designed by Edwin Lutyens, the famous arts and crafts architect, it's got the grandeur that David wanted, the period features they both love, and it's in Godalming, Lucy's ideal location. To ensure we're the first to view it, we've arranged to get there this evening. Now, one of the best things about this house is the garden. So um, <laughs> we're kind of seeing it at the wrong time of the day because you can't see it. <laughs> Come on. Take, take your word for it. <laughs> This place has heaps of character. In fact, it would be like living in your own museum. There are two beamed reception rooms, one with the most amazing ingle nook fireplace. The kitchen isn't huge, but it's charming. There are three good-sized bedrooms in the main house, and the fourth is in a self-contained annex in the garden. It is top of the budget at £850,000. Now, oh, check this out. Wow. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. You won't find anything else like it. It's, it's completely and utterly unique. It is, of course, a grade two listed. Yeah. You wanted character. You wanted to be able to walk into Godalming High Street at the train station. This is it. Only 2% of buildings in England are historically important enough to have either a grade one or grade two status. Of course, you have the cachet of ownership. However, you are also bound by law to preserve both the interior and the exterior of the building. But there's also the possibility of grants to help with that. A lovely flooring down here. It is, yeah. yeah Original like brick flooring. Really nice. There's not many units here, I guess. 
I'm not quite sure how much you can do to it as a Grade Two listed property. You can't hide historical bits and pieces. Yeah. Okay. But you wouldn't want to because they're the no, best exactly. Bits. Yeah. yeah. But you could absolutely put your modern appliances. Okay. No problem at all. Can you picture yourselves living here? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I love the character of the place yeah. and the location, and those are the top two things on our wish list. Yeah. It is an amazing house, but is it the best we've shown them for a young family? <sighs> what a dilemma. <laughs> it's a massive dilemma. I love this place. So it's really down to two, I think. Yeah. Hindhead and this one. Um, so do we compromise on location and go for the house in Hindhead, or do we compromise on space? and live in an incredible historic it's, building. It's an amazing like, building. Yeah. And that fireplace is just awesome. You can imagine our friends coming over and sort of showing them that room with that massive fireplace and beams and yeah. just saying, beat it's that. <laughs> well, if I had one as big as that, I'd be bragging about it too. Smiling again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you can handle it? Um, I feel like this choice may be Almost the selfish choice, the adult choice. Mm. The location here is great and the character's great. Yeah. But does it work for a family? And that's what I'm really struggling to understand. Mm. Yeah, I think we both are. It's a tough decision. I'm glad I don't have to make it. <laughs> the last two days have been very emotional for Kelly and Emma. They struggled to agree on the thorny issue of space versus location, but this morning we're back at the second property we showed them the big detached house in Sandhurst. I have to say I'm a bit surprised, but I'll take it as read that Emma's done the compromising. So, what do you think? I think much better in daylight. Yeah, I definitely. feel so much better. Yeah. You feel so much better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK, we've moved on. The main sticking points for this property are the busy road outside and the noise in the front bedroom. We've been doing our homework and it's very simple to rectify. For about three grand, they could replace the windows with double glazed wooden sashes, but it would then take them over their £325,000 budget. We definitely need it in, in the bedroom. Yeah. I think where we're living now is quite quiet, so mm. I think we would be disturbed, I think, with the noise. Yeah, we'd hear the noise, wouldn't we? Yeah. The only other issue with this house is the unfinished utility room. Sprucing it up and putting a loo in here would improve the house, so we've asked a couple of builders to give it the once over. Well, that obviously used to be an old out outhouse. Yeah. Uh, ceiling heights are low in there, so the roof could come up and make room. It yeah. insulated it all up, and yeah, it can be turned out. There's drains outside. They may only be thinking about raising the roof a little bit, but my advice is always check with the planning office before signing up the builders. The ballpark figure of probably about four to five thousand pounds. Yeah, that's yeah. oh, okay. not bad, is it? I've tried my hardest to put their minds at ease about this very good house, but is it enough for Emma to compromise on that quiet location for the cats? Very positive, I feel at the moment. Do you think it's worth going and sitting down and having a chat about it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think we need to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yes, right? Definitely. Okay. Well, <laughs> <off we go. laughs> Nicely done, Kirsty. In Surrey, David and Lucy have dismissed the listed property in Godalming. It just wasn't family-friendly enough. But they do want to revisit the impressive Edwardian house in Hindhead. However, they'll only consider buying it if I can convince Lucy that Hazelmere, the nearest town, offers her everything she needs. So while they nose around, I go and chat up the locals. We've had a great time since we've been here. Um, there's lots, lots to do for little ones. Very friendly. I made her move, my cousin. I made her move down because it's amazing. Oh, look, Phil and his fan base. It's lovely. Yeah, I like what I can see so far. Nice cafes. Yeah, nice plenty of young mums. Yeah. Excellent. Make some friends. <laughs> well, they certainly seem to like Hazelmere, but is the house strong enough? Oh, wow. This is lovely. Yeah. We're just kind of drawn amazing. to the brightness down it's here. Amazing. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. It reminds me why this is really the best of all the houses we've seen. It's, it blows the others away. Yeah. It feels like a family home, doesn't it? It does. I feel very excited. Do you? Because <laughs> you're a bit worried about the location. Yeah. It was nice today to go into Hazemere and see how nice that was. That's really yeah. kind of reassured me. <laughs> it's not Godalming, but the house is so good, it doesn't matter. They've been a great couple to work with, David and Lucy. They've kept things very straightforward for me. And they love this house. 
I'm just hoping I can keep things straightforward for them because there is mounting interest in this place now. Uh, it'd be a shame to lose it at this stage, it really would. And the same goes for Kelly and Emma, because they're now sure they want to go for the big detached house in Sandhurst on £325,000. Two glasses of cherry aid and a cup of tea. <laughs> um, what do you want to pay for it? We, we've spoken about this, obviously up for 325 We would like to be cheeky. What do you think? I'd go in at 305 Yeah. And see what they come back with. Yeah. Matt, it's Kirsty. We're doing very well, yeah. How do you think an offer of 305 would go down? Let's just see. I'm quite optimistic about this. I think that I've got strong, strong purchases, good position, huge flexibility. So let's let's go in at 305 really, really positively um, and, and see what happens. OK, bye. Are you going to try and find out soon? Yes, yeah. Um, I think the important thing is to keep one's cool. And that's precisely what I'm trying to do with David and Lucy. They're not the only ones interested in the Hindhead house, so we have to play our cards very carefully indeed. It's a very delicate situation, and um, with three people interested, I can see this going to a sealed bid competitive situation. They are asking for offers in excess of 750. Had you got a maximum that you'd be prepared to pay for the house? It's, it's been on the market for 795 previously and it's been reduced recently. So I think it feels like the maximum maximum we would go to would be the, the previous asking price. My advice is go in at 758 and see what happens from that point. Yeah. Yeah, I think that sounds like the right thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Louise, hi, Phil Spencer. Hi, Phil, hi. Hi, can you talk? Yes. Uh, because we've just had our um, council of war. <laughs> um, the figure that they've come up with is £758,000. Um, at that level, they would uh, appreciate an answer. Um, as quickly as possible. Thanks, Louise. Bye. Vendors are in meetings, so um, it might take some time. Back with Kelly and Emma, their cheeky offer of £305,000 has been rejected, so we countered with 310. But is it enough to seal the deal? Matt. Wow, that's fantastic news. <laughs> uh, OK, thanks, Matt. Bye. Hey. 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 <laughs> I'm so pleased. I'm really, really, really pleased. Thank really you very pleased. much. Not at all. Don't cry. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. It's really good. It's a really, really good house, and I think you'll be really happy there. I'm so pleased for them. Now all we need is for Phil to come up with the goods. Well, as predicted, the house goes to sealed bids. David and Lucy up their offer to 781,000 to stand a chance of securing it. The news has just come in. Hi, Phil. Hi, David. Are you there? We're there. We're both. Sitting here with Lucy. We are. We're both together. Yeah. Hi, Phil. Sitting down or standing up? <laughs> sort of, sort of sitting down, down at the moment. <laughs> Up because you just bought a house. Hey. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> As it turned out, we did have a bit more work to do after our phone call. Annoyingly, a few days later, the bidding war sparked up again, and in the end, they had to pay 793000 to secure it. Two and a half months on, it's a red letter day. Picked up the keys today. It was yeah. very exciting to be back. Definitely, and yeah, no, it feels really nice to be back. Just walking in, it felt very homely. It felt very exciting. All this amazing space and only one compromise. Dave was after house over location, yeah. um, and I was more interested in getting the location right, and I, I was the one who had to compromise, yeah. which I wasn't sure if I would be the one to do it, but <laughs> you're evidently the boss. 
Yeah, I think I end up winning in that one. So. <laughs> the search took them outside of the location they thought they wanted. We didn't consider this area to begin with, but we love the country walks around here and we've still got access to all the facilities at Guildford Goddaming Farnham offer, so very pleased. Agreeing the deal certainly had its hair-raising moments, but clearly it's all been worth it. Did he find us a perfect house? I think he'll do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Quite right, let's keep Phil's feet on the ground. In Sandhurst, Kelly and Emma are just three days into their new house. Are we really pleased? Yeah, I'm I mean, the house is um, everything and more that we wanted. I mean, you know, the other houses just, just, just weren't us, no. you know. Um, but this is us. We saw us living here from as soon as we walked into the front door. But it isn't the country location Emma had hoped for. I suppose the only compromise we have on the house is the busy road outside, really. Um, was because of our two cats. We haven't brought them good. over yet, have we? No, we haven't. We want to do everything first before we bring them over. I think they'll be yeah. OK. Yeah. I, think, I think the house won it, to be honest with you. Yeah. I am so thrilled. This one worked out so well for them. I mean, it's my first house, and it's our first house together, so it's, it's, um, it's very special. Um, it's very, very special to us, and... Uh... Can I see you do good? <laughs> no more tears. <laughs>